Okay, so my last thing I want to talk to you guys about, I was, um, and I got a video clip to show you after this too, um, that kind of inspired this, but I, I really wanted to talk to you guys about some things that make a great DJ, because I think we have this thing in our, our minds that a great DJ is something specific. It's, it's one thing. It's like, we look at these guys and because they can do this, they're great, but there's a lot of qualities that go into it. So I just wanted to give you my top five things that for me, for me, make a great DJ, or I think would make a great DJ. Um, when we look at people like a, um, a Chris Vila or a Scratch Bastard or a, um, what is it? I think it's Cubert Q- or yeah. <laughs> when we look at these guys, all we see is their incredible scratching skills. And we see that they can just absolutely just cut it up with the best of them. That is just a lane. That is just a lane. That does not mean that doesn't take away from a mobile DJ who gets in and mixes two songs together. That doesn't take anything away from that DJ. They have just been doing what they've been doing for longer. And so their skill set is a little bit higher. So I came up with some, some things that I feel like would give great qualifications for making a great deep mobile DJ. Let's just call it mobile DJ. So the number one thing is to treat every gig with the same importance. Um, now I talked about this earlier when I talked about what we, what I did this past weekend and how, um, you know, even for a kid's function, we can easily get lackadaisical and we can just sit back and just be like, Oh, these kids don't care, but it's not the kids who, ne- who they say that we are performing for. I mean, any adult in the room can see you as a potential, um, a potential vendor. For any event, you don't know who's getting married, whose child's getting married, who's doing what, who's doing this. I mean, it used to happen to me a lot. I used to do, um, when I was with uh, my former company, I used to do this thing called Boo at the Zoo. And it was basically, you know, I just go to the local zoo, set up some DJ equipment, play for these kids, let them have fun, and their parents will be standing in the background watching their little kids down. If you're an OG of the channel, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I can't tell you the amount of people that came up to me and said, hey, uh, uh, I got a birthday party coming up. You think you could do a birthday party? Or oh, my daughter's getting wet, getting married. Uh, could you be a DJ for the wedding? Could I have a card for that? Uh, can you do this corporate event? Like you're playing music and stuff for kids, but can you play for adults and stuff too? Like you get a lot of different looks. So, when you're at these functions, you should be giving your A game, especially at a corporate event, weddings, and now even like birthday parties, family reunions. I mean, like you don't know some of your siblings, some of your family members could use you or pitch you to somebody and you get a gig out of it. Because just think, all you need is one gig out of that to make the gig that you're at worth it. Because you'll not only make what you made at that gig, you'll probably make a little bit more because they don't know that you have more to offer than what they see right there. I mean, I was at the pool party with two QSC speakers, uh, my Pro X stand, uh, my Rev 7 and stuff there. No lights, no nothing. Everything was skirted, all in black. They have no idea that I have a T stand and lights and up lights and cold sparks. And they have no idea that any of that stuff is even possible i mean the lady that came over to me to ask if i did corporate events and stuff she asked me do you have dance floor lighting she had to ask that because she didn't see it there and i'm like yeah i've got that i've got up lighting i've got photo booths i've got cold spars i got whatever you need and she's like great that's even better took my card so for mobile djs first thing i would say is to treat every gig with the same importance that's the first thing the second thing Man, this was a big one. This is a big one. Um, You can't stress enough how much practice makes perfect. 
I can tell you right now, when I was on the DDJ 1000 and I just had, you know, a wedding here and then I would go and do another wedding the following week, but no practice in between. Just like, oh, I've, I've gone through these motions enough times. You start losing creativity when you do that. This is the whole reason why I want to pick up Twitch because Twitch gives you a medium in between for you to have a space to be able to try new things if you're not comfortable trying them on the big stage or on the the stage of somebody's wedding. Or if you just want to just practice in general, you could. But there are so many opportunities for us to get better as DJs if we just take them. I know that some people work a second job. I get it. I get it. But we're talking 30 minutes. Just 30 minutes of you just putting songs together. You trying something that maybe came across your mind at the last gig. And put these things in your notes on your phone. That's what the phone's for, to use it. I can't tell you how many times I've heard somebody say a combination or I've heard a combination and I'm just like, hmm, yeah, I'll, I'll try something like that and just put it in my notes right over here. And then when I'm in that room next door, I'm, I'll am i try it. When I'm on Twitch, I'll try it. Because if you mess up, who cares? You're not messing up somebody's day. But you got to try it. You don't want to try it at the event. So that's what I'm saying. Take time, at least 30 minutes, and try to practice twice a week maybe. I mean, this is what you do. If, if this is just a hobby, don't worry about it. Go push a button. If you don't care that much about it, then go push a button. That's what I was doing. I was in, I, w- I was letting the, the, the gig just come to me. And it's like, oh, I, I know how to transition between two songs, so I'm good. Now creativity comes out. Now your transitions are different. Now I don't echo out every single time. Now I don't spin the record back every single time. Now I can duck down on some of these. I can bring in another song, make two vocals mash up, you know, make it different. Keep it fresh because that's going to play into one of these other tips coming up here. Because number three is always be a sponge that's ready to learn. If we stop if we stop being able to take in information, then we are putting a ceiling on ourselves. We are, we are definitely capping off our potential. We're telling everybody, nah, I'm good enough. I don't need your advice. Flat out. I mean, that's flat out what you're saying. Even if you don't say it to that person, by you not being willing to be open to new ideas, to new Opportunity. Now, let me let me give you an example. And Mike, I'm sorry I keep using you as an example, but I use you because you have you have shown me so much. So when Mike talks to me about audio, I am like totally 100 percent focused in because believe it or not, I know next to nothing about audio. But Mike is an audio guy. So when he starts talking audio, I'm like, okay, because I know the very bare minimum. I know that if I run this chord into here, it should work. If I run this chord into here, it should work. That's what I know. So when somebody says, well, what chord do you use? Well, I can tell them an XLR chord to a quarter inch jack right over here and it should work. But when somebody starts talking about frequencies and pitch and, and feedback and all that, I don't know any of that stuff. So I rely on people like Mike who have a background in this stuff, who, who provide information like that free, free now. Cause how, how many times has somebody tried to charge you for their information, especially when it's free. And he's just teach me now, nah, man, you just got to do it like this. And this does this. And this does this. And if I don't understand, I'll tell him, I'm, I don't get that. Mike. tell me again. And he'll run it back and tell me exactly. Cause I want it to make sense. I want it to make sense. I always want it to make sense. And he does the same thing, uh, you know, from me. If I tell him, hey, man, I think that this right here will work. Mike's like a sponge. He soaks it in. He uses what he can from what I say. I mean, everything that I say is not scripted. Like, it's not 
It's not what you have to do, but it's a suggestion. It's more than you had before I saw you. It's more than you had before we met. It's more than you had coming into that conversation. So that's why I'm, that's all I'm saying is just still be a sponge. It's okay to be a sponge. It doesn't show weakness. I think a lot of the times when other DJs talk to you or say something about you or try to critique you, they you take it as an insult. Like, how dare you? How dare you talk to me like 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 you know me? You know how many weddings I do a year? I mean, who you think you are? You could just talk to me. I mean, you you know what business I work for? You know how many brides trust me? We kind of wear that pride thing on our shoulder and we just forget that to be a sponge. Because being a sponge is how you got here. <laughs> to be totally honest with you, being a sponge is how you literally got to where you are right now because somebody had to teach you. Somebody had to tell you and you had to listen. Just never stop listening is all I'm saying. Number four. Lord have mercy. Read a or the room. This is so big because once you master this, people will start eating out of the palm of your hand. You will have people in the palm of you, literally, especially if you read the room correctly and you see people starting to dance and stuff a little bit at dinner and then you're like, well, shoot, let's just, let's see if this works. And then it works. And then you, you pull them into your dance set and then the whole room just can't help but dance. That means you've read the room. You've paid attention. You, you weren't doing something else or zoning out or worried about the song. You were paying attention. You have to be able to read rooms, especially if you're going to play for people like DJs, because being on Twitch, your audience is majority DJs. It's probably about 95% DJs until you can get enough people from the real world because there's a DJ world and then there's a real world. When you can get enough people from the real world to come watch you, that will make your numbers go up. But DJs will get on there and boy, they will roast you. They will roast you. But guess what? It's just an opinion. It's just an opinion. It's not Bible. They, you know, you could turn off the comments if you're not comfortable with comments and just be on there DJing. But I encourage you to DJ for other DJs because some DJs are actually out, out there and on there to critique you and, and help you. Say, hey man, if you do it, if you do it like this, it'll be like this. I love those kind of DJs. I'll give you an example that I'll never, ever forget. Cleveland Terry. When we were in shutdown and everybody was doing those mixes, uh, Cleveland Terry watched one of my, my streams and I did the whole stream. He didn't say anything in the comments. I did the whole stream. And then afterwards, he texted me and he was like, um, he was like, bro, if you, you know, if, I just want to give you just a small critique. If you want to transition just like don't take so much of the low pass filter down uh to when you're going to transition and try to pull out just the vocals or if you're going to try to pull out or have just the drums just don't take so much out of it and I, I told him thank you i was like man i appreciate that he was like you know you're one of the first people to actually just say thank you and not take it as some type of criticism i was like nah that i mean you helping me so why, why would i be mad at you but all this stuff helps you do stuff like read rooms, read rooms that you are DJing in, whether it be corporate, kids, restaurants, shoe stores. If somebody walks by and they're dancing to your music, that's what you want if you're in a department store because it's hard to have a crowd in front of you. So be able to read a room. And the last thing, if all these other things come into play, you know what it allows you to do? It allows you to do number five, take chances. It allows you to just try some stuff, to try stuff that you felt like, oh, this will never work, but you've been practicing. You've tried it out before you got to a gig, and now you want to put it, put it in play. You could take a chance. 
You know why? You know why so many people like Nick Spinelli. So many people like Nick Spinelli because he is playing music the way that he wanted to do, but but he's taking a chance because he's done all these other things. He literally has done each one of these things. He's practiced the routine because he, you know, he does other events. He's ready to learn. He learns from all these guys who have these Patreons and stuff like that. Like, you know, the even Steve's, the danger zone, the, all those guys, the Nick bikes, he's learned from all these guys. And then he knows how to read a room. And because he's put all those together, he can now take a, a chance at an event. And so we're sitting there looking like, what? I can't believe you played that. And the crowd did that. And we think it's like the craziest thing ever. Like, how is he getting away with this? But it's not crazy. It's formula. It's definitely formula. You have got to take certain chances out there because we know the songs that will work. That's why when I pulled up my list and everything from earlier, I wanted you guys to see that. I wanted you to see that I play a lot of these songs for the majority of the gig because it's safe. You know you're going to get by with Ice Ice Baby. You know you're going to get by with Dancing Queen. You know you're going to get by with I want to dance with somebody. But what do you not know that you're going to get by with? What are you going to bring back that nobody else is bringing back that is actually hitting? That's why I was saying that I challenge you guys to take a chance. But these are the five things right here that I believe that makes a great DJ. Leave your comments and everything in the comment section below and let me know what you guys think. And because I look, I just think that this, these are the, this is the simple formula. I mean, it, it doesn't get any easier than that.